It's all-star time all throughout professional sports this week across the U.S., but the brightest lights are right on Sin City and the hotter-than-hot Las Vegas Aces of the WNBA. Today, we are breaking it all down along with the stars that will be shining for the all-star game right now on Lockdown Women's Basketball. Ogumba Wallet for the win! You are Locked On Women's Basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball. Hello and happy Monday, friends. It is July 10th, 2023, and great to be back with you today. I am Missy Heydrich, National Women's Basketball Correspondent here at The Next. Thank you for making Locked On Women's Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts in on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You can follow me on Twitter at Missy Heydrich, but be sure to follow The Next at The Next Hoops. And this podcast at Locked on WBB. And of course, you go over to our website, thenexthoops.com, where all of the coverage can be found. Well, we have seen slow starts in this 2023 WNBA season can be the reason for coaching changes and roster moves. But that is not the case in Las Vegas, in a city where dry heat makes it hotter than really hot. The Aces are looking exactly like a defending champion should, in control and no let-up in sight. They've had lopsided wins, big-time individual performances, and are streaking their way to the W All-Star break as the team to beat. And yes, the All-Star game is also coming to Las Vegas, and the stars are going to be even brighter in Sin City. Helping me break it all down today, Matthew Walter, one of the outstanding journalists you'll find covering all things women bas- women's basketball at the next and the man on the Aces beat. All right, Matthew, this is a team 17 and 2 overall. They sit today. They've got a three-game lead over New York and Connecticut, 10 and 0 at home, two games before they hit this All-Star break. When you've looked at the start of this Las Vegas season, what has stood out to you? And what's been the difference in terms of this team being able to carry it over from winning a world championship to where they sit today? I would say the biggest difference is you would think adding someone like Candace Parker would make you have to adjust how you play, right? She's just one of the all-time greats in the WNBA. You would need to then do things. No, it's been the exact same thing. She's come in and just said, I'm going to fill whatever role you need me to fill. I can just go out there and get 10 points and eight rebounds. And I'm not going to care if I am the the leading scorer of the team every night because she understands what her role is. She Mm -hmm. understands I don't need to go out and score 25 plus a game for us to win. That's what Asia Wilson's here to do. That's what Jackie Young's here to do. That's what Kelsey Plum's here to do. And she just fits in so beautifully. And everybody else has filled, like filling their role, I think has been the biggest thing. Every player has filled their role from Candace Parker to Alicia Clark to Kia Stokes to the rest of the bench. Like it's no one is there trying to be the superstar. They are the superstar because they play that way because the team plays in a way that makes them successful. But in the main part of it, they are just successful because everybody fills their role and they do things the right way. Right. And the offense runs so incredibly smoothly because everybody has the ability to go and get 20 points a night, but nobody cares who gets 20 points a night. And Kelsey Plum said it really well yesterday. She put up 40 in their win yeah. at Minnesota. And she's like, I, this one, I don't care what statistical numbers I have. All that matters to me is that we get the win. I don't care if I have five or 40. It just has, has this point has, become unimportant to Kelsey. And I think that is really the the point that shows the Aces are just a team that anyone can score, anyone can do anything. Everybody has accepted what they're supposed to do, and that is what makes them so good is no one needs to do any one thing to make this team, you know, can have to be successful every time. Not every time does Asia Wilson need to have 25. Not every time does Chelsea Gray need to have, you know, a clutch performance in the fourth quarter. Something's different is going to happen every game, but they always seem to lead to a victory. Let's put a pin in both Asia Wilson and Kelsey Plum for just a moment. I want to go back and talk a little bit more about Candace Parker because you said it's unique. It doesn't happen very often where you have somebody who's like that, maybe in more of that role player esque. This was a team, they win a world championship. So there wasn't a ton of holes to fill. But does bringing someone like Candace Parker onto this roster, was that? 
is it almost sort of like a calming presence of a, a true, true veteran? Asia Wilson's been in this league. She's a veteran in her own right. But yet on the flip side, it's just someone with a lot of experience who's won at the highest level. Does Candace Parker almost bring a little bit more of that calming sense on and off the floor for this franchise? I would say she and Alicia Clark do that, right? They're both in the same boat. And obviously Candace Parker is a much bigger star, but both of them are the same, right? Multi-time champions have played with other superstars, have been, you know, played with bigger roles, right? Alicia Clark, this is the first time she's come off the bench in a long time. Candace Parker yeah. has been the star leader of her team for a long time. So just having players that bring different things and have been in every situation helps. Like you said, this, the core four, Chelsea Gray, Kelsey Plum, Jackie Young, Asia Wilson, Chelsea Gray is the only one that's 30. Everybody else has sort of hit their prime right now, right? That's why they're so successful. So, yes, they won the championship, but they need other players to say, this is what it takes to win a second championship, right? Because mm -hmm. Chelsea Gray is the only one with two now, and she did it with two different teams. Candace Parker has multiple. Alicia Clark has multiple championships. They went out and got people who would be able to lead this younger group, now going for their second one, into what does it take? What does it take to win a second championship? What does it take to not let the – championship hangover affect you and clearly it hasn't right they're right. sitting with the best record in the league you Absolutely. know they just put up one of their best offensive performances just last night like it seems like every time they go out and play they do something brand new they had that they haven't lost the game at home yet they're 10 and 0 at home so mm -hmm. it just seems like having those veteran presences who've been in these situations before who know what it takes to win not one but two three form championships is allowed them just to be more calm be more collected every moment on the floor and they've worked together so seamlessly. I wrote a piece about Alicia Clark. She just has fit in and Candace Parker too, where it doesn't feel like they haven't played with this team, you know, just for however many games this season's been. It feels like they've been with this team two, three years because of just their ability to fit in so well and to make things just go so well on both offensive and, and the defensive side of the floor. You mentioned Alicia Clark, and if you look at the stats, she's played in all 19 games so far this season, but started just one. And that tells you, I think, not only a lot about her, but about how they built this roster for this 2023 season. The marquee names at the top of it. Uh, you, you mentioned Kelsey Plum, and she is coming off a 40-point performance in their 113-89 to 89 win over Minnesota yesterday on Sunday. She's 14 of 18 from the field. She goes 6 of 9 from 3. This solidifies the Aces' appearance in the Commissioner's Cup final uh, where they're going to either face Connecticut or the New York Liberty. But, this, but these are magnificent individual performances that we see, but I don't know if I'm necessarily overly surprised that that's what Kelsey Plum put on the board last night because that's the kind of player she is. She doesn't always have to be the primary scorer, but when she's hot and they can get her the basketball and their offense is clicking, she's one of those players that I would say, get her the basketball, let her have it in her hands. I mean, you and I have been around this game a long time. When was the last time you saw someone had 40 on 18 shots? Like, yeah, it's just incredibly efficient yes. on what she did and six of nine shooting from three. And she had a really slow start to the year. She was not playing her best basketball to start this season. And she and I, I asked her about it. And she said teams were guarding her a lot differently this year. Last year they were saying, okay, you can challenge challenging her to beat them with her shot, with her scoring, because she hadn't super proven she could do it consistently before. Becky Hammond showed up and now they're like, okay, Kelsey Plum is what makes their team go. They're tra trapping her on every ball screen. They were making every single thing in her life difficult to early part of the season. And it affected her game, especially her ability to knock down the three. I think since maybe about, you know, 10 games into the season, it's flipped for her. She's hitting her threes a lot more now. She's doing a great job of reading the defense, getting to the basket, finding open teammates. She has a lot of Draw, draw and kick assists, especially a lot to Jackie Young for open threes. And she's really developed her game into something that, you know, she can score at every level, not just, you know, last year she's really showed her three-point shooting, but she has really become a great reader at the rim. She is great at scoring around the rim, finding open teammates. And I think, you know, her passing doesn't get talked about enough. And Becky Hammond would be remiss if I didn't talk about how much better her defense has gotten because yep. last year her defense was really – it was fine. It was okay. But she said, you know, with her struggling on offense, her defense is what's keeping her on the floor. So she just has continued to develop. And I think Becky Hammond has maybe been the most perfect coach to coach her, right? Because I think she has given her the freedom and said, Kelsey, the floor is yours. You go out there and use your talent, right? This is the all-time leading score in women's college basketball history. Yeah, She should not be handcuffed. And Becky Hammond yeah. has given her the keys and said, you go, you're the horse, run. 
And, yeah. and Kelsey Plum was like, all right, cool. And just had taken it. And she's found the moments again. Like I said, she doesn't always need to be 40 points a game. Some nights she has 10. Some nights she has 20. Some nights she has 40, but she doesn't care. She just is just happy to keep getting better, to keep letting her team win. And Becky Hammond has unlocked that in her. All right. If we talk about the stars and we know that when you're in Vegas, everything is just a little bit bigger and it's just a little bit brighter, but it seems as though every time she's been asked to Asia Wilson is the person that answers the call. She has embraced all of that as it comes to being the leader on and off the floor, the face of this Vegas franchise. They signed her to an, a two-year contract extension. That seemed mm -hmm. incredibly important, probably this time of year. It's going to mm -hmm. get a lot of publicity right now as the All-Star game comes to Vegas. But what have you seen in this first part of the season from Asia Wilson that puts her, I think, on trajectory again to be in the conversation of getting yet another WNBA MVP? I think Asia Wilson, the thing that to me is consistency. I think in the first set of games aces have played she had one bad game and it was the game they lost to the wings a couple of nights ago that was her only game where i was like that was not a good asia wilson performance every other time that she's played the season it's consistency you're going you know you're going to get somewhere between 10 to 20 points at minimum you know you're going to get somewhere between 7 to 12 rebounds at minimum and you'll probably get a block or two and a steal or two and she's just going to go out there and do the same thing every night consistently and it's never going to be hot or cold with her it is going to give you the same level all the time. Right. And some nights it's even more than that, but there's always going to be a baseline. And that is so, I think, calming as a coach, right. To know you are going to get the yes. same performance from your star player every single night yeah. that you're going to, she's going to go in there and she's going to rebound the basketball. She's going to score at the rim. She's going to get to the free throw line and she's going to get some defensive stops and get some blocks on the back end. I think, any coach would take that every single night of the week. And Asia Wilson does that at such a high level every single game. And that's just what makes her, you know, so much the probably one of the best players in the league is because it's hard to do that every night, right? Some nights you're going to have an off night. Some nights you're going to be tired. Asia Wilson doesn't look like she's ever tired. She just looks like she's going to keep going and keep going and keep grinding because like every other player on this team, all she cares about is getting the win at the end of the day, whatever it takes. Right. And sometimes she doesn't need to be the star of the night, but right. when she knows her number needs to be called. She steps up in a big way, but at minimum, she's going to give you the baseline every single night. I think she really is one of the most complete players in the entire league, and she's proving that night in, night out, and the accolades speak for themselves. But again, I see her on that list. If you had to put one at the All-Star break to say who's in the running and who's going to be part of the conversation for another MVP, I, I don't think there's any reason why she can't be. All right, when we come back, what can derail this success in Vegas as the Aces head towards the All-Star break and the second half of the regular season? Okay, well, if you're finally taking that summer vacation, because it is almost the middle of July, which is crazy that you've been planning, but you're dreading buying all of the necessities before you can take off, it's time to stop spending your hard-earned money without getting anything in return. Enter Ibotta. Ibotta gives you cash back on hundreds of grocery items from produce to personal care to pantry goods, so you can make sure you are beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing. Either link your loyalty account or upload your receipt after you shop and get your cash back. It's that easy. The average Ibotta user earns $120 per year. That could cover the cost of an entire shopping trip, which would be fabulous, or you could use your cash back to buy that flight you've been eyeing, that game you want to go to, or that fancy dinner that you want to treat. Other apps give you points, but that doesn't amount to much. With Ibotta, you get real cash back that you can cash out to your bank account, PayPal, or gift cards. So right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners $5 just for trying Ibotta by using the code LOCKED, L-O-C-K-E-D, when you register. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app and use the code LOCKED, L-O-C-K-E-D. Hi, everybody. I am Missy Heydrich, and thanks for joining us today on Locked On Women's Basketball, your first listen every day. Every day or tomorrow on the show, more women's basketball coverage and WNBA news and notes with our fearless leader, Howard McDowell. I am here with my friend, Matthew Walter. We are talking about all things Las Vegas, whether it's the Aces or the All-Star Game. It is all happening right there over the course of this week. 
Okay, we've talked about some of the key pieces of this. You mentioned a player as well. I look at someone like Jackie Young, who I think just continues to hit her stride and be part of what Becky Hammond has put on the floor for this Vegas team. But then you got to think a little bit as we move forward. They've got two games this week. Um, They play on the 11th where they host the Phoenix Mercury, and then on the 12th they are at L.A. Then they hit the All-Star break. Then it's going to be the reset for the second portion of this season. Just two losses so far this year, Matthew. One was in June, one was in July. You mentioned the game to Dallas where they lost by two, July 7th. The other loss was a month earlier, June 8th. It was a 94-77 loss at Connecticut, or excuse me, to Connecticut. When you think about what could be the one thing or multiple things that might sort of derail this massive success and this freight train that is the Vegas Aces coming at everybody, what pops in your brain and what do you say these are the things they've got to avoid or they need to get better at in the second half of the season? Yeah, so I think in both those losses, something the Aces struggled with, which really hasn't been an issue a lot of this year, was turnovers. They had 17 in the loss to Dallas, 16 in the loss to Connecticut. And both those games were weird because they played the same team in back-to-backs in in two games in three days. So they played Connecticut two games in three days. They lost the second one. They played Dallas two games in three days, one at home, one on the road. They lost the second one. So is there a, a pattern there or is that just, you know, just a weird thing. It's hard to say, right? You don't play a lot of teams like that in the regular season. And when you get to the postseason, you play like that, but the postseason is a different animal. So it's hard to say, are those things correlated or not? In the Dallas one, for example, the home game that they had that they won, they didn't have Kelsey Plum. She was out with illness. She returned for the game on the road. Asia Wilson did not play particularly well and they lost. So again, there are some, some things you could say, yes, they need to clean up turnovers, but that's not a problem they have consistently. You could say, well, it's playing the same team twice in three games that might just be a weird coincidence. So it's hard to put a finger on it. The thing that Becky Hammond always talks about, and I've noticed this a lot with the Aces, is the defensive side of the basketball, right? They're going to score. They're the number one offensive team in the league. They just put up 110, 113 against Minnesota last night. They're Mm going to find a way to put the ball in the basket. They have too many. They have three of the top 10 scorers in the league. They're going to put the ball in the basket. It's can they get enough stops on the defensive end if the offense for some reason has an off night? And, A lot of that comes down to, you know, their first half defense this year has been at times suspect. And when that is the case, they go into halftime and Becky Hammond can sometimes rip them a new one. And the second half, the third quarter, especially the defense looks like a whole different thing. And I go back to two weeks ago, they hosted New York and Connecticut in two games in three days, the two best teams in the league. Right. And in both those games, they started the third quarter on either a 10 0 or like 15 0 run. And so mm-hmm. Becky Hammond really vocalizes, can we play our best I basketball consistently, especially on the defensive side of the basketball, which is the most important thing for her and for this Aces team. And she talked about it yesterday, their first three quarters against Minnesota on Sunday, 19 points, 23 points, 19 points is what Minnesota put up. She said, that's the best three quarters of basketball I think I've seen us play all season. Now, you know, they were putting the ball in the basket with, with ease the whole game, but I think they need, you know, they said we were going to bounce back from that loss in Dallas by two points. That was what it showed to me that they could do that was that we'll win over Minnesota. But again, I think it's, can they consistently play defense for four quarters or three quarters enough to get a big enough where the fourth quarter doesn't matter, which they've done a lot of this year, limit turnovers. And then the big one, which, I don't know how much control they have over this injuries because yes. you know those are the things that derailed teams so quickly, right? Look at Connecticut without Brianna Jones. That has been, hurt them so drastically because of her ability to, to dominate the paint, right? The Aces have lost Candace Parker for one game. They've lost Kelsey Plum for one game. Jackie Young came close but did not end up missing one game. And then they haven't had Raquana Williams all season. But for the most part, you know, they've had their starting five be the same with one or two changes, and they've had the same, you know, two to three bench players coming in every night. So if they can stay healthy, which again, like I said, this is a very young team minus Candace Parker and Alicia Clark, which they've shown that they can do with this new facility. And they do, Becky Hammond does a good job of balancing how much they practice every week. I think that's going to be the biggest key for them is keeping themselves healthy, keeping themselves active, and then making sure limit turnovers, playing the defense at the high level. They, It's going to be really hard to beat them. I mean, the fact that they beat both Connecticut and New York by almost 20 points in two games in three days, I just don't know how many other teams are going to be able to compete with them when they play at their best as long as they're healthy. 
Yeah, I think at the highest level, that's what you're seeing from this group. And you go back even to during the 2022 WNBA Finals and during the playoffs, there were a couple instances where this team did not look good in the first half. They maybe went in. It was a bit of a tongue lashing from their head coach. They get everything back in order. And then it's a much different second half. A little bit of a pattern, possibly. People get complacent. You're on the road. Maybe the lineup looks a little different. That's hard to say. But when you look at the statistical numbers, Matthew, I see it. And I've got the top six players. Everybody's averaging over 20 minutes a game. Uh, 21 and a half is Alicia Clark, and that's off the bench, as we said. Played in 19, has only started one game. And then you've got Kia Stokes. She's at just about 19 minutes a game as well. So there's your seven that are going to be really that multitude of rotation. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of wiggle room mm -hmm. when that falls off. Not a lot of other players getting a ton of time. And so then, like you said, the question is, what if? What if it is going to be an injury or an illness or something that happens that takes somebody out multiple times? When you look at this bench, what strikes you about do they have the tools on the bench with their reserves to be able to manage some of those ups and downs? So, you know, I've seen that we've seen growth from Kirsten Bell. She's been getting more playing time. She's gotten more opportunities. And I think she's made a good amount of stride with her, her playing, especially on the defensive side. Again, they're still missing Raquana Williams, who is their probably best scoring bench guard. She hasn't played a single game this year, and we're still unsure if she's going to come back sometime soon. There's sort of been not a lot of updated on, on her information with her lower back injury. And then we saw some more of Kayla George on Sunday because Candace Parker was out with an ankle injury. And for her, her offense is she's a lot like the rest of the aces bench. The offense is there. She just needs to sort of figure things out on the defensive end, having not played in the WNBA for yeah. a long time. So again, as they start to just, these other people start to find more minutes and Becky Hammond talked about getting some more people, more game minutes yesterday with the fact that they had Candace Parker. She went to her bench a little bit earlier, got Kayla George in there in the second quarter just to get her some more game minutes, especially I think if she can just try to get people game minutes in non blowout situations, right? Yeah. Don't just let them play the fourth quarter, let them play the second quarter, let them play the mm -hmm. first quarter. So you can try to get them in, in situations where you're not playing the other teams and their bench as well. And I think she's starting to recognize that and noticing like, Hey, you know, if we're winning this game and you know, we're competitive, let's play them, especially if we have, you know, Candace doesn't need, and you look at it, right? Candace Parker's probably playing a career low in minutes. I haven't looked at it, yeah. but I wouldn't be surprised because she's older. And that's where I think you can maybe buy some minutes for her, buy some minutes for others, put some people in that, you know, when other teams, when the matchups look right, you can buy a couple of minutes, also getting them some experience in a competitive moment. Becky Ham talked about it. There's nothing like playing in games in a competitive moment. Absolutely. Well, and it's the, uh, the, term that everybody in professional sports loves load management. She's going to be, she may come down to be having to be one of the best at it this season when she thinks about this roster and using people in the right way. Okay. The 2023 WNBA all-star game is coming to Las Vegas this week. And the game is set for the 15th. There's so many more things going on. We're going to talk about rosters. Who's in what to expect. Matthew and I are going to break it all down when we come back. Hello, everyone. Missy Heydrich here at The Next, and thank you for joining us for Locked On Women's Basketball. I am with Matthew Walter. He covers the Las Vegas Aces at The Next and so much more. All right, we've talked about this team. They're 17-2, and two, but they also are hosting the 2023 WNBA All-Star Game and all of the festivities that come with it. Now, for the fans that are out there, you're going to be able to see kind of the first piece of this, and that will be the WNBA Starry Three point contest and the Kia WNBA skills challenge that's going to be on ESPN on Friday, July 14th, 1 PM Pacific, 4 PM Eastern. The all-star game is Saturday night on ABC, July 15th. There are five first time all-star selections. They've got a rookie in the starting lineup. We've got a nine time all-star returning for, I think will be a fantastic reception in Brittany Griner. This is going to be a big weekend in Vegas, all-star shining. What are you looking forward to the most with this all-star game? 
Yeah, I think it's just, you know, all the stars playing together, a lot of people getting their first time look at the All-Star game. And we talked about Aaliyah Boston getting her first shot. But I think looking at people like Kelsey Mitchell, Mitchell, Satu Sabli, some of these Ezzy Magbagor, younger players that are starting to come up in this league and getting an opportunity to play in the All-Star game. And, you know, am I surprised that it's Brianna Stewart and Asia Wilson leading these teams? No, because they're probably yeah. your number one and two <laughs> candidates for MVP. But some of these other people that are getting the recognition that they, I feel like they deserve, you know, I've watched Nafisa Collier play a couple games in person after she sat out last year with the pregnancy. She's looked really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, Satu Sabli has had, you know, the best season of her young career. Kelsey Mitchell, who is one of the all time great scorers and, you know, college basketball history, finally getting a chance to go to her first all-star game. Ezzie Magbagor, who's one of the great young post players in this league, who, you know, learned from someone like Brianna Stewart getting a chance to play in her all-star game. You know, I think that's what I like to see, getting these younger players an opportunity to show their skills, show their talents, and, and be valued by not just the fans, but by the media, by the coaches. Say, you know, you have played really well this season. You've been hard for us to guard. You've been hard for us to game plan for. You deserve a chance to go show your skills in Las Vegas. And it'll be interesting to see who goes into the all-star uh, into the three-point contest, who goes into the skills challenge. I almost feel like at this point, just put the whole Aces roster into the three-point contest because they're all <laughs> shooting like 40% from behind the arc, and we'll see what happens. I was going to say, and there's three of them in the starting rotation. So you mm-hmm. have, obviously, Asia Wilson, who is mm-hmm. a team captain. So she and Brianna Stewart, they pick their teams. But also you've got Jackie Young, and then you've got Chelsea Gray that is also one of those st- – they are in the starting five uh, or the starting ten. And then, as you mentioned, Kelsey Plum – But I think it is exciting when you start thinking about some of these not only incredibly experienced veterans of this league. Um, You know, we've seen a play like Aneka Ogumike, you know, that's someone who with 11 years experience, she's got eight all-star games now that she's been selected to. But Courtney Vandersloot, she's been in this league now for 12 years. Uh, Dewana Bonner, 13 years in this league, five all-star games coming back and being part of it in Vegas. There's not only a lot of talent, but you see sort of the longevity, I think, of what this league is about. About it goes back to multiple conversations that you and I've had. We had I've had it with others where we start talking about this aging league and the people that have been here for a while. But sometimes when they have when they're having all star type seasons and they have that type of success, it's really hard to be able to quantify that as much for your younger players and for the rookies in the league. Yeah, and I think it also you know you talk about this aging league, but then you look at some of these people in the all star game. Right, you've got a lot of players first, second, third all-star games. I think, you know, I'm looking at Kelsey Mitchell as, as you Magbagor on their first Sabrina Unescu, Kalia Copper and Afisa Collier in their second and third. Same thing with Satu Sabli in her second Cheyenne Parker, Alicia Gray in their first Kelsey Plum, her second, second for Jackie Young, the third for Enrique Gumbawale, the first for Leah Boston. So it's a good mix, right? You've seen a lot of the veterans in the All-Star games. They're still playing and still shining out. But then you've got a lot of these younger players, right? A lot of players who are were growing up sort of as the league was coming, and now they're getting a chance to show themselves in their you know first, second, third All-Star game. And I had a chance uh, when I chatted with Jesse Morrison a couple weeks ago, we were talking about the shakeup and everything going on mm-hmm. in Phoenix, but it was just when the starters had been announced and Brittany Griner mm-hmm. on that list. And I know for people that covered Phoenix and understanding how big of a deal that's going to be, but I think it's going to be an incredibly welcome environment to be able to have Brittany Griner back and part of this all-star experience. Mm-hmm. As you think about Vegas and sort of the reception and what's that's been like, This has to be just another added bonus of the stars all aligning for this year for this WNBA All-Star game. Yeah, I I truly think this is going to be a great, you know, I think it'll, she'll get a huge standing ovation from the fans. Um, And, you know, looking at it, right, the Aces play against Phoenix, uh, I think, you know, sometime this week, right before the All-Star game starts and they're doing their, uh, it's their shoe night and also they're supporting Brittany Griner's shoe or shoe drive organization at that cool. game. So I think it's just a good culmination of things for, for trying to just, you know, welcome her back. And I think, you know, last year they got, you know, big ovations for Sylvia Fowles and Sue Bird who were retiring. Yeah. I think we'll see the same, if not a bigger ovation for Brittany Griner. And if she has a big moment like Sylvia Fowles had with her dunk in the game last year in the all-star game, we should have, you know, a very big social media moment like we had with that. And I think, you know, overall the league has done a great job of really, trying to embrace Brittany Griner and welcome her back. And I think it's just another great opportunity and it'll be a great experience for everybody that goes and sees. And I think it'll be great. You know, it'll just be a great overall event for everybody involved, especially for Brittany Griner. 
Well, she put one down the other night with authority, it felt like, when you watch it back in the highlights. And that is one thing that I think everybody is expected to see. What were we going to see from Brittany Griner this season? Well, I think she has surpassed all of that. All right, my friend. It's All-Star Week, weekend. Uh, everything's coming together. There's so much going on in Las Vegas. But then they're going to turn the corner, and it's going to be the second half of the season. It's going to come fast. It's going to come furious. And then it's going to be playoff time. So when you think about this Vegas squad, they always seem dialed in. They always seem incredibly focused. If there's one message you're hearing, sort of whether that's a consistency from Becky Hammond, what she's kind of giving trend to and she talks to the media or not, or something that you see in the game, how does this team with their defense taking care of the basketball, but really what is the message for this team to stay on that train to continue to be this successful going into the second half of the season? Consistency on the defensive side of the basketball. Becky Hammond will not stop talking about it. I think at this point we ask her more about offense. She goes, well, we're trying to be better on defense. And it's, <laughs> can they consistently be a top-level defensive team? And she got upset when she found out that their defensive rating dropped below Washington's to be second in the WNBA. She wants to lead the league in both offense and defense, right? And she knows that they're going to lead on offense. She knows how good her players are offensively. It's consistently telling them, you guys need to be as great on defense as you are on offense and consistently being good Every quarter, first, second, third, you know, fourth quarter, being the same defensive team when the game starts, when we go to this out of the second half, we want to be the same through all four quarters. And I think that's her message. She preaches it every single day and she'll preach it until, you know, either they lose or they win another championship. She's going to stick with that same message. Well, she learned from one of the very best. And I think if you go back and probably look at a lot of old tape and a lot of old interviews of Greg Popovich and the Spurs, he would tell you the same exact thing. Mm -hmm. Defense will win you championships. You can score and score and score, but mm -hmm. that is the way. And I always say, if you want to be the best, you've got to beat the best. They've only lost two games in this first part of the season. They've got two this week. Whether or not they head into the All-Star break with just two losses to be determined. But I am hard-pressed to find somebody that's going to consistently be able to knock off this Vegas team. Yeah, I would I would 100% agree with that. I think they're the favorites by a, not a, a large margin, but they, they showed me that they are, are ahead of the next couple of teams by a good amount where – I would be hard pressed to see them not repeating as champions. It would take some sort of massive injury or some crazy change of, of the way that things have been going for me to say this team isn't the title favorite by a decent, a decent margin. Well, you're headed to Vegas for the all-star game. So just scooch on into the sports books, check out the odds. I'm sure they'll have all of that information for you. That's exactly where you need to be for this. I'm telling you, this is it, man. The stars are aligning everything. All good things happen in Vegas and then they stay in Vegas. We'll just leave it at that. How's that? Sounds good. <laughs> all right, Matthew Walter, where is everybody going to find you over the course of this week and weekend, my friend? Uh, so you can find me on Twitter at MatthewWalter96. Uh, all my work is over at thenexthoops.com. And if you're in Las Vegas, come say hi. I'll be there late Thursday night through the All-Star Game Saturday night and looking forward to what should be a fun weekend this weekend in Las Vegas. Well, enjoy yourself. I know it's going to be hot. Be it, Like we said, it's a dry heat, but that's okay because you are going to be there with some fantastic stars and fantastic basketball. So thank you, thank you, thank you, my friend. And thank you all for joining us and listening and watching today here on Locked on Women's Basketball. Be sure you can follow me at Missy Heidrich on Twitter. Go check us out at thenexthoops.com. That's where you will find all of the amazing work from my colleagues. And then you can follow this podcast at Locked On WBB on Twitter. Thank you for making Locked On Women's Basketball your first listen every day. For our everydayers tomorrow on the show, more women's basketball coverage with Howard Megdahl and others from the next and beyond. And all this week, everything you need to know about women's basketball here. And of course, some of the very best WNBA coverage anywhere. We have you covered. Enjoy All-Star Week, friends. It's going to be all about stars and stars and stars in Sin City. Have a great time and enjoy.